everybody, it's Uncle Matt, and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. And tonight's bedtime story is from a collection of stories. It's from the book, Madeline in America, and other holiday tales by Ludwig Benelmans and John Benelmans Marciano. And tonight's story we're gonna read is called Sunshine. And just a little preface of this. This story was also copyright. Um, 1950 by Barbara Benelmans and Madeline Benelmans and new artwork uh, by John Benelmans was copyright 1999. All right. And about sunshine. So this is John Benelmans Marciano speaking about his grandfather, Ludwig. My grandfather originally wrote sunshine as a treatment for a musical comedy vehicle for Frank Sinatra, but it soon took shape as a book in the spirit of Madeline, complete with a benevolent female overseer and the use of a city as a central character. He would do for New York what he had done for Paris with Madeline. The story was originally published in Good Housekeeping in 1949, and then a year later as a book in a slightly altered form. Due to the expensive color printing in those days, some of the full color paintings were reproduced in black and white. For this edition, the original full color painting of Miss Moore selling umbrellas near the Brooklyn Bridge could not be found. And so I did the best I could to repaint it. All right. Sunshine. The boy has a poodle, the girl a setter, and Mr. Sunshine is mailing a letter. The letter contains the text of an ad saying an apartment is to be had. In this ad up here, two cheerful rooms with bath in a building that truly hath Atmosphere and old world charm in summer, cool, in winter, warm, Venetian blinds, open fireplace, cross ventilation, ample closet space, refrigerator and hardwood floor, a lovely view, bus stops at door. But the ceiling sagged and the hall was dark. At 203 Gramercy Park, Mr. Sunshine hung up a sign and fell asleep until someone rang his bell. He got up from his soft seat and rushed out into the street. Go, he said with angry face. Go look for some other place. I do not permit cats or doggies, people who have noisy hobbies, people with perambu perambulators, people who keep alligators. Artists, acrobats, or players, traveling salesmen, or soothsayers, to all those I sundry I say thank you for kindly, thank you kindly, go away. And so, for evident reasons, for several long seasons, the apartment at 203 was free of any tenantry. At last, a feeble lady's voice inquired whether there was any noise or commotion in the neighborhood. And when he said no, she said very good, and that she'd be there to see the charming apartment at half past three. As sunshine stood watching the clock, a sweet old lady came down the block, punctual, he said, right on the dot. In a woman, that means an awful lot. Ooh. Bless me, said sunshine. Here advances a lady in comfortable circumstances and an unattached female who pays the rent year in, year out to the last cent. Here comes indeed the perfect tenant, perhaps a mayflower 
descendant. In front of the house, she stooped and bent low. With a small whisker broom, she cleared the snow, and then she fed the pigeons and starlings and all her other feathered darlings. Quietly, as a mouse, she came into the house. Oh, she said, it's a perfect delight. It's awfully homey. It's just right. It's exactly the kind of place I hope to find. You may have a five year lease. I'm ready to sign it, if you please. And here is a check for the first month's rent. Dear madam, said Sunshine, you're heaven sent. He did not know the poor fool. Oh, that Miss Moore was running a music school. And here we see how Sunshine likes to be awakened by the stars and stripes. He dressed in haste and almost fell downstairs to the strains of William Tell. Miss Moore was totally immersed in music whenever she rehearsed. I advise you, said Sunshine, to desist and cease, or I shall be forced to cancel your lease. She simply said, children, give it all you've got. I'm a patient man, I stand for a lot. But madam, he said, this is the last straw. I shall see you in court of law. And after making all that fuss, he ran to catch the Fifth Avenue bus. He rushed to his lawyer and said, George, will you please thoroughly examine this lease and tell me how I can best rid myself of this awful pest? The lawyer took his time and said, Sunshine, I'm very much afraid this is a perfectly good lease. Music does not disturb the peace. This unhappy hour, you understand, you underestimated the power of a woman whom no judge would dare summon. My advice is, in your place, I would make up my mind to face the music. And if things don't improve, I counsel you to pack and move. Sunshine tried hard for a while to find another domicile. And he discovered that it was true that rents were high and places few. Here we behold the mean old grouch trying to sleep on his office couch. Miss Moore felt fine in the early hours, although the radio prophesied showers she exclaimed, Upon my soul, I have never owned a parasol. She finished her crumpet, and then she drank a second cup of tea and went to the bank. She drew enough money for the rent and an additional sum to be spent for a varied assortment of prizes for good deportment. The sky turned suddenly gray as Miss Moore was on her way, and the rain began to fall as she came to an auctioneer's. Hall. Inside the hall, a fellow held up an antique umbrella, and the voice of the auctioneer bellowed, Please let me hear if any of you ladies and gents will offer me ten cents. Miss Moore raised her right hand, and the man on the auction stand shouted, Going, going, gone, sold to the lady who stands there alone. Miss Moore paid and said, thank you so much. I had no idea that such bargains were still to be had. I'll be more than glad to send a lot more people to your lovely store. And now I'll bid you good day. But he said, there's a balance you have to pay. Young man, explain that to me, please. There are 2,000 umbrellas at 10 cents a piece, 
They have been lost or found and have given and have gone astray. On the trains and stations of Manhattan subway. Oh dear, said Miss Moore. This just about leaves me flat. It cleans me out. I'm sorry, dear lady. All I can say is you bid for the lot and you have to pay. And so that afternoon came a truck and everyone on the block said poor Miss Moore. And the neighborhood gossip, a woman named Hattie, observed, The old girl must have gone batty. Miss Moore was totally immersed in umbrellas and music as she rehearsed. Sunshine said, I'm glad at least, I'm glad at last to see you up the proverbial tree. I'm happy, Miss Moore, to let you know that the game is up and out you go. You come here under false pretenses. I must have been out of my senses. This will teach me a lesson I'll not forget. Pack up now, for this place is to be let. Get out with your doggies and with your cats. Go rid of my house of these noisy brats. Miss Moore just tapped her baton and said, In a moment, children, we'll go on. My little friends, I'm very sorry. Please don't any of you worry. You, We simply wait for rain and sell the old umbrellas again. We shall continue to occupy this place. The law gives us a few days grace. With the Lord's help, we'll soon send Mr. Sunshine his overdue rent. Sunshine, sunshine, go away and come again some other day. In answer to the powerful prayers of the son of an Irish cop, the sun was blotted out by layers of clouds, and the sky gave up. Drain pipes gurgled, gutters choked, and the citizenry were soaked. The children left the house as the rain came down like out of a water main. Rusty Regan took pity on the mayor's reception committee. This customer is a United Nations delegate. The tall building is called the Empire State. Miss Moore ascended to the heights and sold umbrellas to Brooklynites. It was windy, cold, and showery on the Staten Island Ferry. The last umbrella was sold in Astoria to a visitor who flew in from Peoria. After the downpour, Miss Moore suddenly was no longer poor. There was no more worry about the rent, and each child got a new instrument. They played in Central Park's mall and gave a concert in Carnegie Hall. And as the tree was lit up in the dark, they celebrated Christmas in Gramercy Park. And the music here is O Holy Night. Late that night came a man to the house. He muttered he was Santa Claus. You'll never guess, he said, who this is. I just came to wish you a Merry Christmas and tell you that I feel like a heel. For months, I haven't enjoyed a meal. And the thing that mostly grates me is that my own lawyer hates me. But pleaded sunshine, if only I could come back to this lovely neighborhood. I like doggies, birds, and cats. Oh, I'll even put up with rats. I've become immune to noises. I love little children's voices, and I certainly take no exception to concerts and musical selections. And so Miss Moore smiled quietly and told Mr. Sunshine to come in out of the cold. He thanked her as he knocked the sleet and snow from his frozen feet. 
The cat sat on his lap and purred with mirth. The dog lay at his feet and peace was on earth. The end. Well, that concludes our Madis Madeline Christmas week. Um, we read a lot of stories, Madeline stories, and I hope you enjoyed them. And that is all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>